Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. Ruffled some libertarian feathers last night. Oh, shit. Damn, dissing on the devil boy. Dissing on the on Saint Sticks Hexenhammer 666. <laughs> fucking guys, man. Dudes are losing your, mind. They're losing your fucking minds, man. Fucking 100 people disappear. Good. Fuck you, man. Bye-bye. So you guys were going to get a free ride, right? So you thought you thought that you thought that Conti was going to come and pacify you and tell you everything you need to hear and everything you need to know, right? Fucking but but when he tells you the truth, oh, he's a socialist. He's a fucking communist. He's a fucking devil. He's a he's the satanist. It's very revealing, right? Six X and Hammer's a big boy. He can handle his He knows he knows the satan shit is a joke, but it it's it's interesting. It's very revealing because it's more about the, the uh, the taxation policy, right? That's what the the topic of of that uh, what people are calling a hit piece. I want to talk about this bef- before. I'll I'll talk more about that in a second. But check this shit out. So, this is the New York Post. This is some I I if you if you're here often, you know that I rely a lot on the New York Post. For whatever reason, it's just New York, right? So there's the New York Post, right? And this is a kind of an interesting, an interesting uh, analysis because they are mainstream media, they are corporate media. I know that, but it says, look at the headline: Amazon removes quote offensive, not quote like like uh, they well they did call it offensive, but in quotes, let's just say it: Amazon removes offensive products containing Islamic text. Right, I'm sorry that it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, right. So what is that? So what is when you read that you say, "Oh, those Muslims, right? The the Islamics, they say it was offensive. Quote offensive. Oh, look, they're they're offended, right? That's what it says, right? Now let's read the article and see what it means, right? It is. They did say the Islamic community did say it was offensive, but not in in the the implication is that. It's not really offensive because it's quote oh offensive right that's the that's the connotation and when you read it very quickly that's what you would if you didn't read the article you would conclude that Amazon removed something quote offensive just to get the you know get the those pain in the ass Arabs out of the way right 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 that's what it that's what it leads that's what it led me to believe when I saw it maybe I'm wrong I don't know what do you think so doormats. Doormats right? featuring verses from the Quran were promptly removed from Amazon on Friday. Right away, a doormat, right? What is the, the, the Islamic people are all about? The feet is the lowest part of the body. Remember when they, when, when, when Bush went uh, somewhere and I think it was Iran or Iraq and a guy took his shoe off and fucking threw it at Bush and Bush like, remember that shit? Remember that? Look at the video. You see the guy, he took his shoe off, right? The lowest possible disgrace right how to disgrace bush he took a shoe off and threw it at at bush right and he didn't hit him bush ducked right you saw that shit so so did so some jerk jackies make doormats where you wipe your feet on verses of the quran all right now that's their holy book that's disrespectful right to some degree, okay, there is a, a a degree of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Whoever made the doormat, and maybe the doormat wasn't a doormat. Maybe it wasn't really made to be on the door mat on the door floor. Maybe you hang it on your wall or something. But let's see what else. The Council on American Islamic Relations complained to Amazon on Thursday more about more than a dozen bathroom and outdoor mats which carry verses of the word Allah in Islamic calligraphy. CAIR received complaints about the items which are off- offensive to Muslims because the Quran the Quranic verses would be stepped on or otherwise disrespected by customers the advocate group said in a statement. A spokesman for CAIR Ibrahim Hopper said the retail the retailer assured him that the links to those products had been removed and that Amazon was conducting an audit of its site. The products weren't offered by Amazon per se, but by independent retailers. And that's what Amazon is, right? Sometimes it's 
not necessarily Amazon selling. It's um, it's other people selling on Amazon, right? Anybody could sell on Amazon. A spot check by the Post showed that the item Kara flagged were indeed gone. So the doormats are gone. Whoever was selling them got 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 censored, right? But CAIR forwarded un other questionable items to Amazon on Friday, including a toilet seat with an image of the Quran, as well as a bathroom floor rug and a towel set with an image of the holy book. In the past 24 hours, all the items have been were bought were brought to our attention, Hopper said. So this is on Friday. So Amazon is seeing it for the first time. They didn't think of anything of it, and now they're taking action. In 2016, door and... <laughs> In 2016, door and dog mats featuring Arabic word, the Arabic word Allah, were being sold in the United Kingdom, angering Muslim customers and elected officials there. Nike also ran a, a foul of the Muslim community and it introduced basketball shoes in 1997 bearing logos that resembled the Arabic word Allah. So they're very sensitive to stepping on their God, wiping your feet on their God, and putting it on a toilet bowl as a fucking in the shit the shithole, covering the shithole with their God, right? And they're offended. How dare them? Yeah. They have ground. They have grounds to be offended. Right? At the time, C A I R threatened to boycott Nike which eventually apologized and called back more than 3,800 pairs of shoes. All, quote, all sellers must follow our selling guidelines, and those who do not will be subject to action. <laughs> subject to action. That doesn't say anything. The products in question are being removed from our store, an Amazon spokesman said. So Amazon's folding, right? They're taking, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to fold, they're going to fold like a, like a, like the, like the cheap uh, doormat, right? So, all right, so First Amendment, right? Now, does the people, do the people that are making the the doormat have a right to free speech and freedom of the press and ex freedom of expression? Yeah. If the, if the people that made that doormat challenged the, at a Supreme Court, if they put a case in that they were discriminated against or their, their First Amendment rights were violated, they could win. Not today in this climate with unfair courts, but in in a in a constitutional America that we used to have, where the Constitution was above the branches of power. Now it's monopoly, right? People like Amazon would probably win that case because because they're Amazon, because they're trillion dollar companies, right? People want to see you know these companies get all the tax breaks in the world, and they don't have a problem with monopolies and. Don't don't you can't tax them because if you tax them they'll leave. Right. So that leads me into the the other subject, right? Because you see how a corporation like Amazon, although they here they are violating someone's First Amendment right, right? They took down the Koran because it quote offended somebody, right? Now you can do it, you can take it down, or so it's a, it's a gray area, really. I mean, the people that made it, the, the people that made made those offensive quote offensive doormats do it deliberately, probably not. They just did it because they fucking they don't know, right? They thought maybe, you know, who who bought the stuff? That would be an interesting study. How many doormats actually sold, and who bought those bought those doormats? And do we have a picture of a doormat? Do we have any evidence that? That people were using the doormat to wipe their feet on it, right? There's all that shit going on, right? But freedom of expression, First Amendment, must be upheld. And you could see how Amazon is right, got their foot right in the middle of a First Amendment argument, right? Because who's gonna, if if the retailer shows up in court to defend their First Amendment rights, Amazon is gonna fuel fucking you know how many millions of dollars to crush that argument? They'll show up with four four corporate lawyers. Right. The way to do it is they're monopolies, right? You got to break them up, right? You got to, and you can't regulate them, right? I know. So we'll go back to the argument of uh, 
of of uh, Ocasio Cortez saying raise the corporate tax rate, right? Which is which is a great idea. It's not a new idea. If you guys are just hearing this for the first time, you think it has something to do with, you know, some chick from the Bronx. You're wrong. This is a, this has been this is the evolution of the the opposition to trickle down economics, which doesn't work. Right? We know it doesn't work. Right? It worked for maybe a brief period of time in the '80s, right? And now you got all these libertarian characters, right, saying, abolish the IRS, no tax, freedom for all, right? It's a nice theory, but in, in, in practice, it's destructive when you have monopolies because you're, you, the, the playing field isn't, isn't level, right? You're not able to compete against Amazon. I just gave you an example. If that... If that retailer that was selling doormats tries to defend his First Amendment rights, if in fact it's a United States seller, because otherwise it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have First Amendment protection, right? But if they did, and it was in the U.S., then them fighting Amazon, right? And you say, well, it wasn't Amazon, it was another retailer, but Amazon will kick in to gain, that's my opinion, they will try to gain control of that First Amendment argument, right? That's what the TPP was all about, that corporations under, under uh, Obama, who was, who was petitioning for the TPP, which is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, would have made a New World Order. Remember that? New World Order, where all the corporations would come together and they would be above, they already are above the U.S. courts now, but they would officially be above the U.S. courts, and they would be able to conduct like tribunals in kangaroo courts outside of the U.S., right? So issues like this would never even hit the, the court. So they would have circumvented the Constitution of the United States of America officially, right? Luckily, that was reversed. The Sanders campaign was lobbying for it. Trump jumped on board. And it's over, right? That argument for now is over. But the, again, the monopoly and the oligarchy have all the money, all the power, all of the advantages, right? It's socialism for the rich, right? It's socialism for, for, the, for the super wealthy, right? So the only way, you cannot regulate them. It's, it's very difficult. The other way to do it is to tax them. When you raise the tax, you bring the, the publicly traded companies back into the public domain, right? Most people don't own stock, right? The corporations own the stocks, right? They own their own stock. They own stock in other companies. The six large banks own, you know, some sometimes fit over 50% of the float, which means that they have a voting interest in, in stocks. <clears throat> I was a stockbroker. I, I studied this, this stuff. I traded my own accounts. I know what I'm talking about. Right? I know you think of some jerk off with a, with a fucking hat and a... And a <laughs> and who curses a lot, but but I, I know a lot about this stuff. So, so uh, so you know, again, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Oh fucking, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, libertarians, that I hurt your feelings, and I hurt I hurt your feelings in your view of the of the guru master, the satanic devil worship man. Right? That was a joke, you jerk offs. It was a fucking joke. Right? I know fucking satanists. I know what I know what it is. I told you I was a professional psychic. I wrote a book called The Psychic Investor. How to use psychic phenomena to outwit the stock market using numerology and and tarot and and every other fucking stupid gimmick, the Ouija boards and I know all about that shit, man. I know what the fucking where it comes from, pagans, how it how it was pagan and it was angelic and then it became the devil. I know all about that every fucking all that shit, right? So Stick Sex and Hammer happens to have six 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 in his fucking name, right? So, 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 so there he is, man. He's, to, to me, he's fucking Mister Satan, man. He's the, he's the devil boy, man. He's fucking, he's the devil, man. Fucking sticks, man. He's fucking, he's the devil, man. Marcus Conti reporting.